Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 18 beta 2 has been out for a couple of weeks and iOS 17.6 beta 2 has been out for a few days. But iOS 18 beta 2 has so much more to talk about as far as features, the overall experience and what to expect in the future. So we'll talk about features, we'll talk about some Apple news as well as the overall experience. Not just my experience, but your experience based off the YouTube community poll. Where at the time of this video there's over 26,000 votes and 265 comments. I've read every single comment to determine what the overall experience is like for all of us that have actually been using the betas. We'll come back to that later along with some of your comments toward the end of this video. But first let's jump right into iOS 18 beta 2 new features. Now, the first thing is Apple actually said you'll be able to control another screen using FaceTime. So if you're FaceTiming someone, you should be able to do this. It's not fully enabled, but there are some new features with it. So if I go ahead and FaceTime from this device to another device within the options, if I tap on share, then share my screen, we'll give it a second. It will count down once it's actually connected over here. We'll see it. Then we'll tap on it, swipe home, and you can see my display. Now, if we move this down in the upper right, we have a new option tap on it and it seems to sort of just flash the display, but we can at least write on it. So if I want to circle something over here, it circles right away. Maybe I want to point something out as far as an app and maybe something they need to press. You can do that. And then after a moment, it sort of just disappears. Now this feature should be updated where I can fully control it, but it doesn't seem to allow it just yet. When I press on this, it just sort of blinks, but we should be able to scroll back and forth to control this phone as well if it's allowed. So this is just a feature that's been updated again. It's great that you can still mark it up, but you'll be able to share pretty soon within settings. If we go down to where it says Siri under Siri, they've changed some of the text at the top compared with the first beta that you can see here. And they've also updated this. If we go into listen for with a new option that says talk to Siri. Now it doesn't say what it is. It doesn't give any context, but maybe this has to do with Apple intelligence. So maybe when that's available, we will be able to hold conversations and use Apple intelligence to talk back and forth to Siri. But at this time, it doesn't seem to actually work just yet. We also have a new customization for the lock screen. If we go to the lock screen, press and hold, then we go to customize, go to customize lock screen, get rid of one of these, tap the plus button, then scroll down to where we have notes. We have a new option for quick notes that wasn't in the first beta. So if you want to add a quick note there, you can do that, or you could switch it back to whatever you'd like. I prefer the flashlight, but again, it's fully customizable with some new options. And speaking of customization, if we press and hold, go to edit, you'll see on the upper left where it says customize, we actually have a new icon there. So they've just updated it from a paintbrush to sort of a paintbrush over the front of the home screen. There's also an update like this under photos. If we go to our sort option, so we're in the sort option and then tap on view options, you'll see here that we have view options and they've added an option for show shared with you. So that's something that's a little bit different that they've added in this update. It doesn't appear to be in beta one or show the same sort of icon there as well. Again, back in settings, if we scroll down to face ID and passcode, put in our passcode, you'll see they've changed the text here as well. It's a slight difference, but it says manage apps using face ID and other iPhone access settings, set up alternate appearances and change your passcode. So again, they just keep refining things more and more. And with this update, of course, we get some major updates. Some of them I've mentioned before, such as RCS messaging. If you go into your apps, depending on the carrier that you have, you'll have RCS messaging enabled. And this is available. It seems in the United States, at least on T-Mobile and Verizon. Some people have said it's not available on AT&T, but it will be a little bit later. Many people have asked, why isn't it in the European Union or in the UK? That's just because Apple hasn't added it yet. It's an early beta, expect RCS to be there a little bit later, but you can send text messages both from Android or to Android with photos and videos in high quality. So that definitely works now. It is a little bit buggy, but at least it works. And I have a full video about that as well. Something else they've updated that hopefully I can try out one day is side loading in the EU. In fact, side loading on iPad should be available in beta two. So if you have iPad OS 18 beta two and you're in the EU, you should be able to install those third party app stores with alternate installations of different apps. Epic games is bringing Fortnite. That's still on hold, but that should hopefully be pretty soon where you could install that maybe rocket league or something else. 
There's also the update with screen mirroring on Mac. I've talked about that in a different video and also the new Apple pay setup. So you have that option if you go into your wallet app and we have a new animation in order to add a card to Apple wallet. This is a much better way to do it where it says, hold near card, hold iPhone near the chip on the card to add it to wallet. If I do that with this card here, it gives haptic feedback, but it says network not supported. Now I would have guessed that when you have to actually input this, it will get the information and then make you put in more information from the back of the card for security reasons so that you can't just have someone come up and tap the card and take the, your information. So I'll try that out once it's available on the networks that I have. And with beta two, we're seeing more and more refinement with the control center, with the power button where you can't just tap it now to go into power off, you have to press and hold, then you can slide to power off. So that's a nice little update. We'll see more and more refinements with beta three. Three. When it comes to macOS Sequoia, there's a feature worth talking about. macOS Sequoia now supports HDMI pass through on some apps for unaltered Dolby Atmos support. So this is great news. If maybe you have a surround sound system, you have a receiver that you just wanted to hand off that information so that it can process it itself and not rely on Apple. So that's something that should be in macOS Sequoia. And we'll see that once it's released to the public, there's a few different things I wanted to mention as far as stories from this week, Apple actually has a back to school sale now available in the United States, Europe, Asia, and the Middle East, and maybe other countries as well. If you go to apple.com, it typically is at the top and it says buy Mac or iPad for college, get up to $150 gift card. That's in the United States, but you may get things such as free AirPods or a different value gift card when you purchase a Mac or iPad. So that's available. Now be sure to check out apple.com. You'll be able to see all of the different things available in your area. Also, another thing I wanted to mention, since we haven't been able to try out Apple intelligence yet, hopefully it'll be free, but it looks like we could have a subscription model for that in the future. According to Mark Gurman, it would be similar to what we have with iCloud plus where we'll have some basic features for free. And then additional features may cost additional money. Hopefully it won't be for a while. We'll get to try them out, see how well they work and maybe they'll just roll it into iCloud plus or something else. But either way, I hope they make this more easily accessible to more people and on more devices. Another thing is Apple actually made the original home pod obsolete this week on Apple's website, where it says obtaining service for your Apple product after an expired warranty, they've now made the home pod vintage. So if we scroll down, you'll see TV and home products and the original home pod first generation is now vintage. That means it's no longer supported and that's of July 1st. So that means maybe no more updates for the original home pod, although maybe they will continue to update it. It's seemingly got updates for some time, but all of the home pods don't seem like they're going to support Apple intelligence since the chipset can't handle it, whether or not they add some features where it could maybe offload some of that information to Apple intelligence in the cloud. We don't know, but it looks like they've ended support for that. We'll have to wait and see, but that's a bit disappointing as it didn't seem to get a whole lot of updates as far as features go, but Apple is working on a new home accessory that could have a display and sort of be a home pod together is sort of a home control. We've heard rumors of this and it looks like they're still working on it based on some code that was leaked mentioning a similar product. So hopefully we'll see that very, very soon. Now, as far as releases this week, well, we had a bunch of different betas. In fact, I went over them in a different video with iOS 17.6 beta two. It's a pretty minor update. Probably will bring some fixes such as the alarm clock bug fix and more, or maybe they'll push that to a different update. But we had a bunch of beta updates that were for previous versions, such as watch OS 10 betas and all of the other releases you can see here. So lots of different things came out this week. Of course, many of us are waiting for iOS 18 beta three that should go along with the public beta. And I would expect that very soon, as soon as maybe Monday or Tuesday, where we'd get beta three with the public beta releasing later that week. That's what Apple did last year. I would expect a similar move this week or this coming week with all of that sort of updates with public beta and then everyone can try them out in a much more stable version. So that should bring a lot of refinements and features. And that's typically when the next betas get much better compared to beta one and beta two. Of course, we could get an iOS 17.5.2 to fix small bugs, such as the screen time bug and alarm clock bug. But at this point, it looks like Apple's probably just waiting for iOS 17.6. So we could see beta three in another week, or we could see it this coming week as well. We don't really know, but we would probably get a final RC version or maybe a beta three, then an RC and then a public release toward the end of July or early August with the final release of iOS 18 coming out in mid September, just before the iPhone 16 and 16 pro launch.
Now, as far as the overall experience, well, many people say that iOS 17.6 beta 2 is very stable and is quite good with the exception of one thing where somebody's having an issue with the notes widget. Some people have said that's an issue. It doesn't seem to be an issue for many people, but in general, it seems to be very, very stable. That's really the only complaint I've seen about 17.6 so far iOS 18 beta 2 is okay, but it's definitely still an early beta and needs some work, but this isn't really anything out of normal. It's to be expected early on and it's doing better than previous betas have in previous years. So I'm pretty impressed with it so far. Now I did want to give you a little tip this week about something you may want to disable if you're finding you're having really poor battery life. And then we'll talk about battery life in a moment. But one of those things has to do with accessibility options. If we go into accessibility options and then go down to sound recognition, if you have this enabled and you need it, leave it enabled. However, if you don't need it, I would recommend turning it off as it seems to greatly improve battery for some. The same is true with all the previous battery tips I've talked about, but I just wanted to make sure you were aware of that. The same is true with music haptics. This can use quite a bit. Maybe try turning it off until it's refined and see if it's better. Unless of course you're trying it out and you need it. When it comes to battery life, well, it hasn't been very great, but it's been okay, at least for an early beta. Battery health is at 95% with 235 cycles. You can see coconut battery here with all the different statistics. And as far as my battery life day today, well, if we go to the last 10 days, yesterday I had two hours and 30 minutes of screen active time, three hours and 36 minutes of screen idle time, used about 60% of my battery. I'm really only getting four to six hours of screen on time, and it's pretty terrible, at least for me. I typically have to charge it before I go to bed since it gets down to 10 to 20%. So there's something going on in the background. Instagram, of course, seems to use a ton of power for no reason. The home and lock screen lights up and that's just something that maybe you need to adjust notifications, but seems to be not so great in this beta, but it is an early beta. So I'm not going to hold that against it just yet. Now there is one thing that keeps coming back for some people and that's the storage bug on beta two. Now this of course should have been fixed based off the release notes. But if we go into our iPhone storage here, some people are having excessive use with their system data being hundreds of gigabytes in use. If it doesn't clear on its own after you reboot or maybe do a hard reset, then maybe you could downgrade if you're still having an issue, but it still shouldn't use up enough data that you're actually not able to install apps. So let me know if you've had that experience, but in general, it is cache storage and it will go up and down on its own. But in general, it should be fixed according to the release notes. When it comes to connectivity this week, well, it's the same as last week. Beta 2 has actually been pretty good for me. I haven't had any issues where 5G becomes a problem and drops. You'll see it switches immediately. It's nice and fast. Data works well. And I haven't had any issues with Safari with it. The same is true with Wi Fi. It stayed connected pretty well, switches nice and fast. And I haven't had any issues compared to previous betas. So at least for me, it, it's been doing pretty well. And I haven't seen many complaints about it. Apple did fix some things this beta with voiceover where it was working better for some people. Emoji reactions are working better and random processes sometimes do get stuck to heat up the phone, but those have been better with beta two than beta one. There's definitely still some bugs with beta two where things such as banking apps don't work for some. However, my banking apps work. I've only heard this from one person. Full page screenshots don't seem to work very well. So if maybe we go back here, take a full page screenshot. Try that, go here, full page. It doesn't work. It just doesn't work at all. Tap on it. It won't let you do it. So there's definitely still some bugs here and there. That's well known. There's odd airdrop issues sometimes where you'll receive an airdrop, but it doesn't complete and you have to cancel it and start again. There's a low volume bug where sometimes the volume's just super low and it doesn't come back up. And even at the highest volume, it doesn't work well. And notification badges sometimes get stuck on different things. In fact, my notification badges on email or mail don't work at all this time around. So with do not disturb turned off, now I have the badges. Sometimes they disappear. Sometimes they're in red. Sometimes they're not. It just changes randomly, it seems. So it's definitely a bug. But again, I excuse it because it's early on. If we turn back on do not disturb of course all of them disappear for the video now of course there's other issues when in silent mode sometimes it doesn't vibrate if a call's coming through the wallpaper dimming bug is definitely still there where it desaturates and also taking photos and trying to view them can cause the phone to crash and screen time is just broken in general if we go back here and then we go to Let's see if we can go to screen time just doesn't let me do anything. And then it locks up settings. So still some serious bugs here and to get out of it, you just have to close it out like that. So beta three should probably refine a lot of these issues. I'm not really concerned about it, but hopefully they'll get a little bit better.
As far as overall performance, well, performance seems to be okay. It's not incredible. There's occasional stutter. It does get better here and there. And its promotion is nice and fast. Sometimes it's faster if you reboot, of course, and seems to be decent in general. On a 14 Pro Max, it's a similar experience. So if maybe you're scrolling, go over here, go all the way to our app library, and it seems to be okay, but it's definitely got some issues still with performance. And I'll show you that with Geekbench in a moment with benchmarks. When it comes to the overall heat of the device, I do think it's better, at least for beta two for me. Some people have complained that it's much hotter, but in general, beta two has been much better than beta one with stuck processes and getting overheated with 17.6 beta two. I think this is pretty refined at this point and nice and cool. So let me just show you with the thermal camera on iOS 18 beta two, we have almost 36 degrees Celsius on 17.6 beta two. We have about 32 degrees Celsius and in Fahrenheit on iOS 18 beta two, we're around 97.4 degrees Fahrenheit and on 17.6 beta two around 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So overall temperatures are not extreme, but higher than typical based on regular use compared to maybe a more refined version, such as iOS 17.6. It's quite hot outside and we have an ambient temperature of about 80 degrees Fahrenheit in the room I'm in right now. So for me, it's okay, but in very hot environments, it's going to get overly hot and pull the screen brightness down. When it comes to overall benchmarks, let's take a look at those. They're not great. I ran them again here today and I have 2,773 for single core, 6,532 for multi-core. If we go back and take a look at what we had before, it's gone up and down. In fact, it's down from the second run I had the other day, but up from the first run. So in general, it's okay. It's staying consistent, but not as good as what we had with 17.5.1, where it was significantly higher. You can see down here, if we take a look at this 17.5.1 is much faster, but there's a lot going on in the background and maybe Geekbench six even needs an update for that. So if you're wondering if you should install either iOS 17.6 beta two or iOS 18 beta two, I would say hold off for now, unless you're already on one of those versions and just need to update to the next wait for iOS 18 beta three or iOS 18 public beta one. That's the one I'd probably recommend as that's when it will be much more refined and be stable enough for day to day use. As far as what you had to say, let's take a look at some of your comments. Never give up. QM seven YV said iOS 17.6 public beta two on my 13 pro max. Absolutely phenomenal. Much better than 17.5.1 battery life is really great at this point. Everything works so smooth. However, there is one bug I found audio files. Flack doesn't play anymore. I requested it on feedback app waiting for the final build. Ricardo Cagusi 1529. Hopefully I pronounced that properly installed iOS 17.6 beta two on my iPhone 13 pro and is working fine. The phone is performing well, fast, always cool, even using intensely best version of iOS 17. So far, in my opinion, quad rider Honda said using iOS 17.6 beta two on 15 pro max. It's been great, very smooth and snappy battery life is better than 17.5.1 and also 17.6 beta one. Haven't had any issues. Chicken Easter said I'm running iOS 18 beta two on my iPhone 14 pro, and I've had a few bugs. The first one is that music sometimes freezes and hangs when I'm playing music and have quite a few songs in the queue and it freezes and hangs when I'm either adding music to the queue or rearranging them. I play songs from Apple music, by the way, per Lindy Srinson said, I'm actually on iOS 18 beta two. And I'm really believe this is the worst beta I've ever tried bugs for sure. And battery life is also at the highest level. Hope soon to receive beta three. Luke Canavaro said on my iPhone 12 pro iOS beta two ruined usability, full of bugs, errors, volume buttons stopped working. And when they claim to be working, they don't actually change the volume. It switches by itself from the speaker to the sound only coming from the top speaker. Beta one was much better. The only bug was in the control center layouts. They made the rest of the system much worse in beta two, not to mention that the battery seems to be lasting 40% less time and that the iPhone is heating up much more than usual, eagerly awaiting beta three. Lorado Ramatsui said I'm on iOS 18 beta two. It's the first beta I've used in years. That's full of glitches. I understand now when they say don't use betas on your daily driver apps, restoring at random add contact text in the dial is all caps with underscores. The phone visible 
visibly stutters when my battery is below 30% or whenever it feels like it's had enough. A restart fixes the problem until it returns again. So that's everything so far with iOS 18 beta 2 and iOS 17.6 beta 2. Expect iOS 18 beta 3 as soon as this week, hopefully in a few days. And let me know if there's any other features you found that I haven't mentioned in this video or previous videos. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.